Zen 1v1 debut. Probably the most hyped player right now. Um, partly because of his ban, his one year ban from RLCS that pushed uh, back his age requirement to play RLCS to 16 from the usual 15. And uh, now he's making a one's appearance against a, a very proven uh, top tier player worldwide in Razier's. Now Zen's sitting number five in the overall leaderboard at the moment because there's two moxies ahead of him. So he's number five in one's uh, ladder. And I've not really seen much from him in 1v1. So I'm very excited to see how he's going to do against Razier's. We all know he's incredibly mechanical. We all know that he's incredibly talented. But will he have the ability to do... Well, there's three main things in a show match setting that tend to be different from ranked and from um, practice matches, for just random private matches. First thing is you've got to be able to adapt. You know, playing one match in ranked, um, you know, ranked is a series of best of ones, essentially. So it's all well and good to win uh, ranked games against someone, but to win in a series, you're going to need to bring more than just one style um, on occasion. Sometimes one style will do fine, you'll just dominate, but you've got to adapt to your opponent, you got to adapt to your opponent's kickoff, you got to adapt to your opponent's um, offense, you got to adapt to your opponent's defense. That's going to be one of the things to look out for for Zen. We, we know he's got the natural ability, we know he's got the talent. Does he have the adaptation um, in a match against Razier's? You know, secondly, how is his ment mental going to be? Because um, he's, he's n he is not untested. He's played a lot of Rocket League competition. I don't think he's going to have any kind of mental inconsistencies here. I expect him to be solid, but you never know. You know, we, we could see some quick chat. We could be blessed by some quick chat spam today. You, you never know, in, especially in 1v1. And that's always really interesting to observe as well. Yeah, apart from adaptation, mental, you know, it's exciting to see. Will Zen just be able to do what he usually does? The way I would describe Zen's normal, normal play style is he just overpowers his opponents with speed. Pure speed and mechanical proficiency. Um, you know, if he can't overpower Razier's, then will he be able to play the positional game well. well he's, done, he's done so here. So I would say the first minute or, you know, 40 seconds that we've got of this game, the first minute and 40 seconds, it's not a display of Zen overpowering Razier's mechanically, um, but he's still up 1-0. He's just dodged an air dribble bump there, Razier's lines all in, Zen scores. Simply. Oh, Zen might be AFK here. Looks like he might be lagging. Uh, he says sorry, but yeah, Razier's going to play on. I think that's fine. Um, I could reset that, but it looks like the players are quite happy to, to continue. Zen might, might be uh, having a little bit of lag here, but he is playing on. Um, I'm, I'm just going to ask on the next next goal, I'll ask him if he's lagging. I don't want to distract him right now. Yeah, don't forget, Razier's is a very mechanical player as well. It's very difficult. I've, I've rarely have ever seen somebody just completely roll uh, Razier's mechanically. Uh, you know, he kind of an off day every now and then. Everybody has an off day. Every once in a while. Or oh, Azir says 400 ping. Has he got 400 ping? Or his Zen has 400 ping? Oh, it's settled. Um, I can I can offer a pause, though. Yeah, I'll just pause. I'll just pause. I, I, I think he, he'll probably be... Uh, it would probably be smart for Zen to... Go reset his internet is going to make more sense than just trying to play through 400 ping. I think what it was at before, like 60, 70, is probably fine. Although this orange exclamation mark that's flashing is a bit a bit daunting, especially when it turns red. It's not not good to see. So yeah, Zen's just going to really quickly reset. Um, I'm just going to un I'll unpause. Uh, you can uh, play till he's back. I'll. Reset it to one nil at two thirty. Yeah, I don't want to. I know Razier's will probably be a, bit, be a bit frustrated if he's just sitting here doing nothing. So I'll just reset. I'll just. Uh, I'll just keep doing this. <laughs> Wait, it didn't work. Uh. He says good. No, wait a little. You can test. 
Oh, his mom is using the connection. No, mom. He's like, mom, I'm playing a show match. I want to beat Razier's mom. This is not the time, nor the place. One minute. He says, no, no problem. No problem. Take as long as you need. Um. Ah, oh, well, we can all relate to that one, ladies and gentlemen. We've all been there in some way, shape, or form. You're on the, you know, biggest moment in your competitive gaming career. Obviously, this isn't it, but I'm sure we, we've all had moments in our different levels of competitive gaming. Where, yeah, somebody started watching a video and then, yeah, you lose the team fight, you concede, all kinds of things can happen. Um, is it fixed? I'll ask. I'm just going to pause and go back to 2.30, like I said, if it's fixed. Because I think up until then they were kind of playing. Normally. Okay, it looks like he's testing. Oh, that looks fixed. I don't know about you guys, that looks pretty fixed. Oh, 20, 30. Excellent. All right. The scoreboard might be a bit bugged because I think Razier's did score a goal that I've now taken away from him. Um, but we're going to go back to 2.30. This is like far from an exact science here. I'm going to be the first to admit. I don't really remember the exact moment that the ping happened. Oh, no! Mum's <laughs> Mom strikes again. <laughs> right, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> Okay, here we go. <laughs> this time. This is the one. Come on. Third time lucky. And we have liftoff. We have movement. Zen remains 1-0 ahead. Um, yeah, credit to Razir as he probably could have taken a free goal at the initial Zen lag moment. Um, but instead of doing that, he decided... Oh, it's saved by Zen. Uh, Razir's decided to give Zen a chance to position himself and survive the incoming attack. Oh, well. Okay, now that is very Zen. That is a very Zen moment, what you've just seen. That's a bit more like him. What you expect to see from him. Pre-jump into a um, <laughs> interception, recovery ceiling shot. Yeah, he just does weird things. Weird, fast things that seem to work. Um, you're probably going to know what I mean if you don't already by the end of this match. A very good player, like improvising and yeah, coming up with very quick mechanical solutions to tough problems that Rocket League presents. Reverses into a catch and then immediately flicks the ball into an air dribble. So he's 3 0 up. I think a fair lead for Zen. Uh, we maybe lost a minute of this game where Zen was just struggling in defense, trying to survive while lagging, um, but he did survive. And now that he's seemingly back at his best. The gauntlet has been thoroughly thrown down and it's now up to his ears to respond. It's a great position here for his ears. Then Zen is darting down the middle of the pitch, but his ears has a good angle opened up and that's a great shot. Wow. <laughs> Perfect shot. I stand corrected by his ears. Now look at the approach. He gets into the middle of the pitch, so he's got all the angles to work with. Take notes, everybody. That is how you set up your ground shots. You don't set up your ground shots by dribbling straight to the opponent, straight to the goal. Get a big angle, and you can shoot that anywhere you want. Zen with a takeoff sideways. He's definitely got the ball moving towards the net now, though. Just a clean landing before the second takeoff for the shot. The post has his ears covered. Now the counter-attack. Another boom to the top corner. Zen's reacted well to it. And he's the first to recover. Oh, he trips up Razier's, who half flips back into the plate. Well, that was a great exchange. Zen caught Razier's, tripped him. Razier's immediately reacted by half flipping to recover. But he's just not got the boost to survive. Zen triple flip resets. Or was it a double? Um, it was a double reset, wasn't it? Well, yeah, that that probably could have been another one if he wanted, if he wanted to set one up. Just went for the shot, because he can. Who is this Zen? He's uh, a player that is going to be very, very talked about in the coming weeks and months. Um, you'll notice he's got Vitality Zen as his uh, clan. Well, Vitality is his clan there. Wherever it's called. Club, I think it's called. Um, because he is a signed player for Vitality. And it's expected that he will be joining uh, two of the current three Vitality players for the Spring Split. Right now, the expected lineup for the spring split for Vitality is Alpha 54, Ridosin, and Zen. Um, Saizen is currently in the, in the roster. Uh, most people think it's going to be Zen. 
um, for the spring because Radosin and Alpha have been playing extremely well uh, recently. Sizen's been solid, but um, he has been outclassed by his teammates. You know, at the end of this game, this game's over, I want to take a moment to talk about Vitality because um, it, it is a very relevant um, thing. Oh, what a save by Zen there. He doesn't even give me a second to talk about Vitality because he just keeps on clipping. Razir's did well there. Zen did better. Um, but yeah, th there's a lot of talk about Vitality. Whenever you, whenever Zen's talked about Vitality or talked about it, so let's talk about that um, before we get stuck into the next game. Vitality are already looking like a top three team in Europe this this split alongside alongside Oxygen and Carmine Corp. Vitality already look like they might be a top three team and that's without Zen on the roster. So, you know, it's great to talk about Zen. I'm talking about him right now because he's playing a match, of course, on my channel. Um, but I think there also needs to be more talk about current Vitality with Sizen. You know, Sizen, Alpha 54, Redosin deserve more praise than they're getting. They are not just a placeholder. That team can and probably will have an impressive run at the Winter Major. I think they're going to make it. I think they're going to do uh, do themselves proud when they get there. So we should be talking more about the current roster as well as the future potential roster with Zen. Uh, so just wanted to really quickly say that in this match because I've said it before on my channel, but I want to bring it up because I don't think they get enough praise for uh, how good of a team they are. Um, that being said, obviously Zen's a prodigy. Obviously he's unbelievably good at the game. He's looking simply too good for his ears right now. Um, who's hanging in there mechanically, but not really able to present too much of a threat. It's not just the offensive mechanics for Zen that have been impressive. It's some of the defensive plays as well, the recoveries, the saves. Really left Razir scratching his head at times. That's a problem for Razir in this matchup, is it's going to be very difficult to know um, when you're up against a player like Zen, it's very difficult to know what his limits are. You know, how close to the crossbar do you need to hit your shot? How close to the post do you need to hit your shot for it to actually go in? Um, how fast do you need to get into the air to actually beat him to the punch? These are all things that Razir needs to figure out quickly um, if he's going to win this matchup. It looks like he's got the better Zen a couple plays in a row there. Has a goal lead for himself. You know, Razir's is definitely capable, I think, based on what we've seen so far. Um, he's capable of winning this. Although I'm already, you know, uh, going to call him the underdog just from game one. Well, that's an open net miss from Zen, but he's just too quick to the second ball. Razir's didn't expect him to go. We've always got to keep an eye on Zen. His recoveries are so quick that he will just go a lot of the time and trust himself to be the quicker of the two players. McLean, thanks to the 7131. Welcome back to the channel. Also, Ilya SRL, thanks to the Prime. Business SRL, thanks to the 40, uh, 45 month tier 1. Guardian X80, thanks to the Prime as well. I, wait a second, I was looking at my subs. Did Zen just go too high on a challenge and completely miss? Yeah, or maybe an accidental flip. I'm not sure um, if it makes sense to do what you did there. Hopefully, not more lag from. Uh, from his mum using the internet <laughs> at the moment. It feels like when LeBron got scouted, people just wanted to see him play. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure on Zen. You know, if he doesn't immediately burst onto the 3v3 scene and become a top five player in uh, EU, first, re uh, you know, first split that he plays, people will probably consider that an underperformance. You know, if he's not right up there with Matira, with Rise, um, you know, with, with, with uh, definitely with his teammates. Like people expect him to immediately be the best, the best player in his team. And yeah, if he's not, it'll probably be a disappointment. So lots of pressure on him. But uh, you know, the the way that you can you know deal with pressure in that instance is by practicing. You know, I I truly believe, especially in a rock league context, that just practicing is what breeds consistency more than anything else. Ah, oh, it's a bit lucky for Zen there. <laughs> He's done well, but he probably didn't have that one planned. <laughs> He's a bit lucky Razir hits it straight into him. It's a misplay from Razir, certainly. He tried to knock it past Zen, and uh, instead just gets dunked on. Practicing and getting good sleep for sure. Yeah, agreed. But yeah, pra practice uh, is what will breed consistency, and, you know, performing 
well under pressure is a, probably a lot easier when you've seen the same positions more often than your opponents have. You know, if, you, if you're in a tricky position or in a high pressure scenario in threes or ones, RLCS or uh, even a show match like this, it's much easier to, to handle it if it's something you've done before. Um, Zen just holding boost that entire time, knowing that there's another 100 for him to grab. Didn't want to lose speed at all, and that's a much more calculated dunk this time. Zen proven to be pretty unstoppable with his offense now. Razier's went for the wall approach, and that's not always the smartest idea, because when you're coming off the wall like that, you sometimes get a bad hitbox in the ball. Look at the speed of Zen. He's not even gonna not even he's gonna make it back for this one though. He really is recovering quickly off all of these bumps. Just look at that burst of speed, it's amazing to see. He looks fast in slow motion even. He's one of those players, you know, if you watch it just a couple of games from him, um, you can already very clearly see there's just unique tendencies in the way that he moves. I was reading a comment on, I think it was Jack's video. I didn't, like I said, I didn't get a chance to watch Jack's video on Zen uh, in full yet. But I believe, you know, Jack had nothing but compliments for Zen and his mechanics. He thinks Zen's going to take over the scene uh, when he's unbanned in the spring split. I don't think I actually said during this video, but he didn't, before anyone asked why did he get banned, he got banned uh, because he played on someone else's account when he was too young to play RLCS. So as soon as he became old enough to play RLCS, they just banned him for a year from that moment um, and that's a pretty consistent that's something they've done in the past they did that with Atomic who now plays for G2 they did that with Seiko who obviously plays for BDS now it's a very consistent uh, ban uh, formula that Psyonix are using there the French community were pretty outraged by it and they were saying free Zen but I think it was a very fair ban and something that um, should definitely continue to happen if players are playing when they shouldn't be playing oh dear oh no Razier's <laughs> Oh, that was not the play. Well, I mean, Zen probably just wants any kind of touch here to waste some time, but he's got more than he could have bargained for. His Brazier's own goals. That's very unfortunate for the German player. Now, Zen's still, he's still banned. He's going to be unbanned in this spring split. He's not playing yet. Um, but yeah, he'll be playing soon. Yeah, in, uh, to go back to Jack's video. So Jack uh, made a video about him. I didn't watch it all, but one of the comments said that uh, Zen, oh, look at this. Oh, what a save by Razier's. Kind of annoyed that he saved that though, because I would have loved to watch that again <laughs> on the replay. <laughs> Sorry, Razier's, but it would have been a good goal to see twice. Um, yeah, one of the things apparently about Zen's movement that makes him quite easy to uh, identify is it, is it air roll left that he uses with analog? He doesn't have an air roll left button so much as he has it on a trigger, I believe, on his controller. Um, so instead of using a bumper, like a button for air roll left, like most players do, I think he uses the trigger, and that makes it possible for him to do micro aerial left uh, moves. I don't know if that's the case, but I saw a comment on that. I was like, that's kind of interesting. So I wanted to bring it up and see, is that actually the case? Is that true? Have we got any Zen uh, fans in chat who can tell us if that's true? He has aerial left on the same button as break. That's interesting. Obviously aerial buttons only work when you're in the air and break only works when you're on the ground, right? Unless there's some kind of weird rocket science kind of interaction that actually slows that, that causes brake to do something when you're airborne. Um, yeah, that's kind of common to use two buttons, one for a ground-based thing and one for an aerial-based thing, and put them on the same key. For example, air roll and power slide are often on the same key. Seiko's the one who uses it on his triggers, then uses it on the brake. That's interesting. Yeah, I thought I, w I wanted to ask you guys if you knew any more about that. Um, I, you know, I mean, I, I don't think that's the the defining factor of Zen, regardless of whether or not it's true. I think it's mostly the way I would describe it is he's very aggressive with his recoveries. You know, when you watch a lot of players, even pro players, recover in Rocket League, they play it very carefully. They're trying to make sure that they don't fling themselves out of position. Um, but Zen just seems to absolutely launch his car into recoveries. He throws himself around the field, um, but doesn't seem to lose control. That's how I would describe what we're seeing uh, when we see Zen play. He's, uh, he's been pushed a bit closer on that one. Looks like he's given his mum permission to watch a video during the mid-game here. Spiking his ping to 300 is back to 44. <laughs> 
ask him about the air wheels. We're not going to do that right now. He's in the middle of a match. We'll, we'll, we, might, we, might, we might ask him later. Yeah, a lot of talk about Zen, obviously, uh, today since it's his debut. But Razier's, yeah, he, he's not played a terrible match. I think this game especially, he, game two, he did outplay uh, Zen strategically a few times. He, you know, caught Zen pre-jumping too high, uh, caught him out of position with a demo. Um, unfortunately for him, those, you know, wins and those victories have been a bit too uh, few and far between um, to really make this into as close of a match as it could be. Zen's just been brutally efficient. And... Uh, his offense has reigned supreme. Couple of unlucky moments for his ears in this match as well. One with the own goal and uh, another one with the, um, well actually two two dunks, two air dribble dunks went in for Zen uh, against his ears in that last game as well. But I think the second one was probably more to do with his ears slightly mispositioning in my opinion. I don't know if going off the wall to save that was, a, was the best play. It's very hard to say though, I mean, tough to get a good hitbox defensively either way whether you're on the ground or the back wall the one difficulty that you if you're wondering why is the back wall often a risk risky position to take as a defender when somebody's air dribbling at you it's because you don't have as much control oh, look at the placement from Zen you, d you don't have a, uh, the ability to change your car's elevation the same way as you do when you're on the ground that's just insane. Zen, Zen was very clearly on one side of the ball that entire time, and then just as it's about to land, he waved ashes under it and shoots the other way. This is insane. Uh, by the way, don't forget, this is, I think, still kind of a new game mode for, for Zen. How long has Zen even been playing 1v1s? Like, consistently. Before he made his recent rise to the top of the uh, rankings, making a top 10, top 5 appearance in the ladder, I hadn't seen him in 1s pretty much ever in the in the top 50. I think he he's a pretty recent addition to the ones world and he's making it look easy. He, he just looks like he knows exactly what he wants to do and uh, you know he talked about adaptation earlier. He's not needed to adapt because he's just been dominating. Razier's hasn't come up with an answer yet and that means that Zen can just keep chugging on forward. A few weeks if not less. Well that's just mad isn't it that he can just so quickly uh, look like he just belongs here. You know, a lot of players who played threes and twos their entire Rocket League career and uh, come into ones, they look a bit like a fish out of water, especially with kickoffs and uh, challenges. But Zen is... You, you forget that he's not a ones player when you watch something like this. You know, don't forget, Razier's has been a pretty consistent, you know, top four, top three, four EU player. I'd say top four for the past year. Only behind Joria's Abjack Moxie for the most part. Occasional, uh, occasionally another player will come up and uh, take his spot, but yeah, Zen is just dominating a guy who's certainly been top 5 EU for well over a year now. And yeah, he's got Razier's jumping all over the place. I mean, Razier's, every time Zen moves, Razier's is panicking because <laughs> he's worried that uh, Zen's just going to go. This time it does actually work in his favor because Zen overextends, loses momentum. He's had an absolutely bulletproof kickoff game and defensive answers to everything Razier's has tried. And even just seeing him slam a shot to the backboard there, it shows that he's you know, a very high ones IQ because that just keeps Razier's honest. Razier's can't be jumping early on potential long range air dribbles now. Zen just reminding him, hey, I might just shoot. So, you know, Razier's is on the ground here while well, Zen's coming towards him. Wondering, well, is he just going to shoot that from distance? Is he going to air dribble? I'm not sure anymore. The mix up from Zen has been spot on. Boost advantage is his. There's, there's different types of speed in Rocket League. Zen just seems to have the acceleration um, figured out. He, he, he really knows how to get from 0 to 100 in any position you put him in. Maybe can, yeah, I think there's definitely players who have played more consistently fast 1v1 series. You know, think Dark against Daniel, think Naupo any times he plays. He, he's just constantly supersonic. Um, Drally in the past as well, but it's been less about the constant speed for Zen and more about the, the bursts of acceleration. Not just with his car, but also with the ball. He, he just has that, that ability to... I mean, look at this. He just comes flying in out of nowhere. Razier has absorbed that challenge 
really well. I mean, to, to just see that one coming is pretty impressive because Ed was like not even moving and then suddenly he's. It looks like he's going faster than Supersonic. <laughs> is it just me or does it just look like he's hacking the game with some of these. some of these uh, acceleration plays? Like I, like I said in the last game, it, it, he just looks like such a controlled, out of control player. <laughs> it looks like he should be out of control, but I don't think he is. I think he's just perfectly in control of all this. I can't resist tie the game though. No, he won't. Zen again. Stands strong. Oh, but he's misplayed in the re recovery. Razier's catches him. Let's see Zen's POV here, because that's one of the well, it's the second time this series he's been caught by a demo. Yeah, it's a careless play, definitely. You should have probably seen that one coming. He had vision of Razier's, but he thought it was a race to the boost. Didn't realize Razier's had a better play in mind. Another possession for Razier's. You know, Zen's looked dominant. But he's no longer got a lead in this game. Razier's running a bit dry on boosts here. He's got to be careful to get a good touch. And he does. Zen opts for the dribble. Fake challenge from Razier's. Zen does flick, but... Sets up a boost seal with it. He's got a couple of resets from a very difficult position. Messes up the wave dash, though. You know, if Razier's didn't have so much respect for Zen there, he could have had a free possession. He still will. And it's against the Zen, who's got boost and is recovering quickly. You've got to look out for these early challenges. Razier's gets away with it. Now he's on the counter-attack. One reset for him. Shot not high enough. Zen able to sneak it past, and that should be an open net. Has he missed this? No. He's slotted it. In off the post. Just over a minute left. Zen's back in front. Organized chaos. Yeah, great, great description there, to be honest. Organized chaos. It's like you go, you know, go into somebody's uh, bedroom and you see just a pile of every everything's piled on the floor. Um, it's a complete mess. Then you ask them, "Where's, where's the, uh, you know, where's this, where's that?" And they they, pick, they find it immediately. You know, that that's Zen. He's <laughs> he knows exactly what's going on, even though his opponents might be thinking, "What is that? What is happening? <laughs> what is happening right now? How am I supposed to read this?" Razier's has kept it close here. Said, "I think a win, one win. Razier's has definitely got is the physical game. He's very aware of where Zen is when Zen's trying to bump him, for the most part, anyway." And Zen has been caught by Razier's a couple times. And again, Razier is able to shrug off a bump, and he's going to score. Well, Zen must have thought that was going to be a demo, because he ran out of boost after hitting it. Did he think he was supersonic? Well, I'm not sure, actually. Really no point in going for a bump there, unless it's going to be a demo, because, of course, the back wall will prevent Razier's from landing too far away from the play. Razier's can clutch up here. Not the best bounce for an air dribble, but he starts it off the ground with a reset as well. Gets in front of the ball, and Zen's missed it! <laughs> You talk about earlier on in the game, Razier's overestimating what Zen's doing. The opposite has happened here. Razier's with the reset. Made it look like he had the flick on target. But he actually just missed it completely and it's bounced underneath Zen. Eight seconds left. Are we going to game four? Razier's finds a way. And he should be winning the game here. The ball's going to bounce. Indeed. We will go to game four. For well played, Razier's. He's solved the impossible puzzle. Now can he do it two more times? Who's better, Daniel or Zen? Uh, well, I mean, you'll never know until you, you see them match up against each other on LAN. Um, who's better in 3v3. But the player with the, the more impressive 1v1 resume before they uh, played RLCS was definitely Daniel. There's, there's not enough time uh, for Zen to build up a Daniel-level resume in 1v1 between now and when he plays RLCS in spring. Daniel's one's resume was immense um, in his run to, you know, becoming old enough to play RLCS. But I think, uh, you know, ranked in 2v2 and, uh, you know, the the respect that the, the pros have for Zen is higher, uh, you know, as he's coming into 3v3 than Daniel's was in the pro scene in NA. I think that, I think that Zen... Uh, has done probably more to make a name for himself in the pro scene. Daniel made uh, Daniel had more of a name in the in the fans' opinion, but uh, I think Zen's got more of a name in the EU pro scene than Daniel did in the NA pro scene. Daniel is obviously like 
him and Farscaler were the most hyped up players in NA, and rightfully so. But um, I don't think everybody just assumed he was going to immediately dominate threes the way that he did. Like uh, a lot of people thought he would, a lot of other people thought he might need a, a split or a, maybe a season to uh, to figure it all out. It seems like everybody unanimously agrees that he's just going to be one of the best players. So that, that I'd say that yeah, one v one Daniel. Everything else Zen in terms of hype. Well, one v one and fans Daniel. Pros and every other type of cop rock league uh, apart from ones, it would, would go to Zen I'd say. Thank you to Falark for the eight month prime. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Daniel was always viewed as a major down uh, player, but downgrade on typical. Ooh! Oh, Razier's is starting to take control here. That was a massive play. Just kept on rolling. He had the reverse. He had the reverse air roll there. Not air, air, air roll. Sorry. Just what do you call it when you're leaning? I, I forget the specific rock league term for it. Um, is it pitch? Is it pitching? Because it's a uh, technically flying terminology. I think it's pitching. Tilt? <laughs> well, we probably don't want to use the word tilt. That's definitely associated with something else in esports and Rocket League especially. Yeah, I, I think that setup for flicks is very, very consistent. You just like keep rolling the, or you roll into the ball the way that you intend to flick. Saw a nasty flick actually from Vatira. Um on YouTube the other day. Where he managed to like fake a reverse 45 degree flick one way, roll under the ball and send it the other way instead. So there's some there's some really, really high tech flicks coming your way this year. Base Chili, thanks to the six month tier one. Welcome back to the channel. Zen's probably gonna go for this. Indeed he is. Didn't want to give Razier the uncontested air dribble. He might still be up against one here, indeed he is. It's not the best takeoff by Razier's, and if that was an attempted pogo shot, it leaves a lot to be desired. Zen has his second counter-attack goal in a row. It's a very weird game. It's, it's a very different game from the previous three we saw. The first three games of the series, Zen was conducting the pace for the majority of it. Zen was really dictating the flow of the game, and it was Razier's who was responding, and in game three responded brilliantly to win it. Um, but this game's been mostly Razier's controlled. With Zen having to counterattack twice to score, and now he's in a bit of a panic. He can't go for that corner boost even. So he didn't want to leave the ball for Razier's to shoot. And Razier's possession has has been a little bit better in this game than the others. Starting to dictate more of the game. He's caught out of position here though. Zen slots an open net equalizer. And I think that's a bit careless from Razier's. I mean cheeky to turn there. The only reason to turn there is if you think your opponent is not going to go because obviously they're facing the ball already so they're going to beat you if you turn and then go. Um, so Raziers must have been reading that Zen's not going to go for the ball there. Is that a smart move against Zen? I'm not sure if it is. We've not seen a lot of evidence of him not going. As Raziers continues to crush it with the aerial flick game. Zen can be in position all he likes but if the quality of shots from Raziers continues to remain this high Zen will be up against it Razir's kickoff starting to get results for him even more Zen loses yet another goal I think Zen might get a bit frustrated here because he's not had control in this game at all the way he did in the previous three this is a massive turnaround Razir's 12 shots to 5 that tells you all you need to know about this game Zen even just goes for a drive kickoff here he doesn't want to hit it and he's done well you know that demo Prevented the seventh goal for Raziers. Massive flick for Zen. Goes high. Raziers under it. Oh, Zen's just too quick though. He's found an opening. Raziers thinking to himself that all he has to do is stay close to the ball here. Just make sure Zen doesn't create an opportunity and then out of nowhere Zen's got one. It's a cheeky little self pass off the sidewall. Zen should be half flipping on this kickoff probably. He's lost a lot of kickoffs. Uh, I reckon he should probably throw a half-flip kickoff in there um, at some point. It's just a very easy 
Um, very easy mix-up for pros to do in 1v1. We can make it all right now with a double reset play. Floor pinch past the approaching Raziers. I don't think he even got that last reset, but it was close enough that Raziers wasn't sure. When you look from Raziers' pub, it looks like Zen's got that one. Actually, I think he did have it because we saw a dodge animation, so... You know, with or without it, that was probably going to be a goal because uh, I think the floor pinch accuracy was good enough. I feel like the Fennec is a, uh, a harder car to read than the Octane with the resets. Oh my, what a save by Raziers. Not sure if you guys would agree with that, but yeah, when you I feel like when you're a goalkeeper and a Fennec tries to get a reset, it's hard to know if they got it or not compared to an Octane. I feel like it's very clear in comparison. That might just be me, though. Zen too quick again. Punches in a one-goal lead. Did Raziers forget, after all that possession and control that he had earlier in the game, that you cannot leave a ball uncontested with Zen up against you. You've got to go for everything. You've got to expect him to go for everything. Oh, I love that from Zen. Well, he's not had the best kickoff results in this game. But he switches it up. And I said that earlier. You've got to adapt. If, and the kickoff is one of the main things that... I'm always looking at for players who are not known for their 1v1 ability to be able to adapt in. Oh, Zen's faked himself on this play. Nice one, says Zen. I think he might have just faked himself here. Did he really have to flip to the right? Nah, he's faked himself. He could just flip left. <laughs> I think he might be ironically nice one himself on that one. <laughs> and not, <laughs> not saying nice one to uh, Raziers. I don't know. Not sure. Razier's also joined in and said nice one to him as well. That's a very nice touch by Razier's. To bounce the ball into a dangerous position. He's got a very strong position for himself at the end of the game. As he tries to dunk in the one goal lead. Zen's done well. Stays in the back corner. Fakes a challenge. Uses all of his boost to do that though. And somehow falls on top of the ball. Grabs the back corner boost. And starts the counter-attack. Well, that could have gone a lot worse than it did. Can Zen ice it up right now? No, he can't. It's going to go into the ground for OT. I cannot believe Zen got away with using all of his boost for a fake challenge and being saved by the post. Into overtime we go. Will it be Zen's or will it be game five? He charges in, as we've come to expect from him, and finishes it in 11 seconds. Raziers calls GG's. Unfortunately for him, he just did not see that one coming. A few too many times that Zen was able to sneak in and use his quick approach to surprise Raziers. And it wasn't like he did it every single time. I think he just faked enough challenges, shattered enough times to make it hard for Raziers to see those challenges coming. You know, really good mix-up defensively from Zen. Really good adaptation at the end of this game as well with his kickoff strategy. He was being dominated in the kickoff, so you really, I think, mix it up well at the end of this game in many, many ways um, to show that he can adapt. One of the questions we had at the start of the series, can Zen adapt if Raziers figures, figures out a way to make this uncomfortable for him? The answer is yes, he can. Um, and he puts a very important overtime win on the board. This game five would have been a bit scary. That would have been the test of the mental. Um, but the mental remains untested for Zen. I don't think he was really forced into a war uh, here.